Hello everyone, this is Dr. Meyer here with the second installment of my series on modulation. This video will feature a brief overview of several other types of modulation other than common tone modulation from part one that you may encounter in your analyses. First, chromatic modulation. Chromatic modulation usually involves chromatically inflecting a single pitch to enact a modulation. Usually the resulting chord will end up being a secondary or applied chord, which helps pull the ear toward the new key area. This type of modulation is a little more abrupt than the smoother common chord modulation. Listen to this example from Beethoven's Piano Sonata No. 10 in G major. Notice how the C in the second measure of the second system becomes C sharp on the second beat? That's our chromatic inflection needed to enact the modulation. It makes the A minor chord, which is diatonic to G major, our home key, become an A dominant seventh, which leads us to D major, our new key. The presence of C sharp in the following measures helps to confirm that modulation to D major. Some theorists suggest that this is a chromatically inflected pivot chord, common to one key but not the other. So for right now I'm going to leave out the brackets of the common chord modulation to avoid any confusion. Listen once more and hear that chromatic modulation. Phrase modulation, or direct modulation, occurs when the music suddenly changes key with no connecting factor present. We call this a phrase modulation because it often occurs at the beginning of a new phrase or formal division in a piece. Listen to an example of a phrase modulation from Mozart's Sonata in A major, third movement, which begins in the key of A minor. at the end of the first phrase the piece suddenly modulated to a new key, C major. While C major and A minor are related keys, this does not always have to be the case, especially in later Romantic era pieces. Just think about direct modulation as a musical driver changing lanes without using a turn signal, aka any connecting chords to let you know where it's going. Another type of modulation you may encounter is called common tone modulation. In the same way that two keys can be connected by a common chord, they can also be connected by a common tone. These are different modulations, even though they sound similar, so please make note of their names. Common tone modulation often leads us to distantly related keys as only one tone is shared in common with the next chord. Modulations like this often sound abrupt because there is little to connect the keys together. Listen to this example from Schumann's Widmung and see if you can identify which tone is being kept in common with A flat major and E major. <laughs> Did you notice the A flat in the voice and piano being retained over the key change and transforming enharmonically to G sharp? 
This is a tricky example of common tone modulation because the tone being held in common is spelled differently but still sounds the same. This is how Schumann could modulate from four flats to four sharps, practically across the circle of fifths, by using a single common tone. Sometimes composers can smooth over an abrupt modulation by using a sequence. A sequence, remember, is a repeated pattern at a higher or lower pitch level. A sequential modulation, then, is a passage repeated, literally transposed into the new key. In this example, Bach uses a sequence in the third and fourth measures to enact a modulation from D major to A major, without the listener even knowing that the key has changed. Listen to the example and verify the repetition of the passage in the sequence. The presence of all these G sharps is another confirmation that the modulation to A from D has taken place. Modulation is possible even in a monophonic texture. But how can we tell without any harmonic backdrop, you ask? Well, harmony is always underlying a melody, regardless if it's solo or not. The tendencies of tones to resolve in any given key still operate in monophonic music. For example, in this Bach cello suite prelude, the piece begins in G major, with F sharp as a leading tone. However, in the third system, we begin to see the addition of C sharp, which interferes with our diatonic G major. Our ear starts to hear C sharp as the new leading tone, as it can be heard around D in most of these cases. The modulation to D major has thus been enacted. Looking at the last measure of the excerpt, you can see that D major is confirmed with a whole measure of D major harmony. Listen to the example and follow the keys from G major to D major. <laughs> Now it's your turn to practice. Listen to this example from Schumann's album for the young, beginning in A minor, and try to detect which type of modulation is occurring here. Pause the video if you need more time. If you heard a sudden modulation to F major after the repeat sign, you have detected a direct modulation or a phrase modulation. This modulation has no connection to the previous passage and just begins in a new key. Here's what we learned in this video. Chromatically altering a single pitch in a chord can enact a modulation. Direct modulations change the key at the end of the phrase without warning. Common tone modulations keep a single pitch, even and harmonic ones, in common with the chord that is used to modulate. 
Bach showed us that sequences can smooth over modulations and make them less obvious. Monophonic works can have a modulation. Just look for that new leading tone. And lastly, unlike common chord modulations, these modulation types do not always have to lead to closely related keys. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.